Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Travis and I got another international for you guys. So today we're gonna to be working on a 1975 International Lodestar 1800. Pretty cool, never have worked on one of these before. This thing is basically like a semi-truck for agricultural use. It's been sitting since I think 1997 or 96. It was last time it was registered. I don't have any skin in the game on this one. This is my friend Jake's. He, uh, I told him I'd help him get it running. So he hauled it over here from where it was. So they had to air up the tires and everything, but he didn't touch the engine or anything like that. So let's take a look around this thing real quick and see what we're working with here because I haven't even looked around this thing. Got a big old hitch. Got, uh, see down there, we got some air brakes. He said he caged the brakes, so they're, they're open. Got an open tire here. Got ourselves a muffler, drive shaft, rear end. Look at that, thing's a monster. Got all our air lines down in here for the brakes. It's pretty cool. But yeah, being an Arizona truck, um, it, it looks pretty rust free. I mean, if you look on the bottoms of the doors there, I don't even see it bubbling up. This thing is in tremendous, tremendous shape. 98, so 08, 18, that's about 24, 25 years. This is the gas cap. So that's not, that's not good at all. Yeah. That's definitely old gas. I don't know if it's... Yeah, that sounds full. Yeah, that sounds like it's got gas in it too. And this gas cap really ain't doing much. But there's another tank on the other side. Let's go check it. Yeah, there's definitely gas in there. I can kind of see it. Let's see. see it. It's a little bit shiny. Yeah, see that? You can see gas down in there. Ooh, yeah, that's bad gas. That's been sitting in there since the 90s. Mm. Check out the inside. I think he said he bought some parts in anticipation of working on this thing. So, like hoses and whatnot. Check that out. International on the... Uh, carpet covers here that's really cool look at that don't you love the desert no rust and it's been sitting outside too it's clean a little stiff uh oh this thing is in really good shape look at that seat wow that is really Cool. I was reading online and this is either a four speed, a five speed or a 10 speed. I don't know which one it is. And I was also reading online that this right here is like a two speed rear end, I guess. I'm not sure how it actuates, but that's what I read. I heard a crack right here. Yeah, that's what the desert does though. It dry rots everything. And as soon as you sit on that, it's gone. Let's see if it's open. Safety regulations, fueling system, Pacific Pride. Look at that, Arizona Department of Transportation motor vehicle. This is like a uh, gas card or something from the uh, state. 1995 registration. You got your fuses over here. We'll have to check those with a test light maybe. Fire extinguisher. Let's see if it's still good. Look at that. Still good. I don't know what this is. Air powered something, not for parking. As a manual choke, is that it? Huh. Wiper, let's see. You twist it. Uh, defrost, temp, heat, vent, pull outs, just little doors under there. Oh, this is your tanks, fuel left and right tank. And probably just leave that alone. 224,015 miles. Got all your gauges. Oh, it even has a key. Isn't that nice? Love it when you have keys. That's probably your lights and uh, that's probably a door. Gas pedal's not stuck. Air brake pedal's not stuck, but we're not gonna know anything until we start it and it builds up pressure. And you have the clutch. I felt something. Okay, yeah started to move clutch is working 
ashtray. There matches. Well, if you're going to have an ashtray, you got to have a lighter. So I'm assuming this is either a 404 or a 446. In 74, they came out with the 404 and the 446. And I'm assuming it's got a 4 or 5 speed. I don't know. But it looks to be all complete under here. We got plug wires, distributor, coil, air cleaner. This looks like a four barrel Holly. <coughs> well, I'm just turning the fan. I'm not turning the engine. Let's try it the other way. Maybe uh, the belt will grab a little harder. There we go. It's turning. All right, so we're not locked up. I don't think we're locked up. We're loose. Dirt. Arizona dirt. Hoses are pliable. That's good. I was reading on the forums last night that behind the distributor uh, there should be some casting numbers to show what you know what it is it even has the distributor rotation I don't know if you guys can see that right there rotation counterclockwise firing order this right here is an interesting setup this looks like your speedometer cable that would run in your speedometer usually I see them hooked to the transmission not the distributor I'm not sure how they're getting their speed from that we even got an old uh, old fuel filter here. These lines, oh my gosh, I can just hear them cracking. Hear that? Look at that. Yeah. Not going to be usable. Let me see if I can find a dipstick. It's on this side. It's on that side? Yeah, it's right here. Okay, let's check it real quick. It's full of oil. Doesn't look like there's water in it. I just saw this. There's a delete plate there for what looks to be a yeah. fuel pump. So the fuel pump. Right here, where this hose is. And uh -huh. then there's the ground and then the wire boards hanging on the other side. Oh, so somebody robbed the fuel pump off it? Yeah, I have a new one. Okay. All right, nothing exploded. There we go. Crank it. Okay. We're going to go ahead and pull the plugs out now and do a compression check just to see the overall health of the motor. Well, the porcelain broke. We need a spark plug. If you're into classic cars, trucks, revivals, and resurrections, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel because that's all I do is work with everything pre-1980. Uh, so just wanted to pop in and let you guys know that. Go ahead and crank it. Yeah, 120. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yep, 120. All right, go ahead. Yeah, 120 right on the second crank. Okay. 
head. Yeah, on 20. Go ahead. Yeah, on 20. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, on 20. Good we got good compression on all eight. Real yeah. good. I broke a few more of the spark pluggers getting them out. They just snapped off. I'm usually pretty good about that, but uh, Jake had a few extra used ones, so we're going to gap these and put them in. I mean, it's black, but it's not fouled out. I mean, except for what I did. Turn it on. Yeah. Turn it off. Your coil's getting 12 volts. Go ahead and crank it. Okay. I don't hear anything. Could be a set of dirty points or yeah, because you aren't you aren't getting any spark, you're right. That's interesting. Is that uh, electronic ignition? Yep. It is? Mm hmm You knew that? Yeah. Oh. I didn't know until I did some reading oh. that they that was an option on them. Okay. Well, we'll have to change our tune here. Got a big surprise. When I look down at that, I'm like, that doesn't look like points. This is actually electronic ignition right here. And we're not getting any spark out of the distributor. If you follow these two wires that come out of I don't know what you would say replaces those points. I think it's a magnet. Those two wires come out here. If you follow them, they go right here. I just unplug them. They plug in right here to this module, this ignition module. And anticipating that this might be bad, Jake already bought a module. But I want to test and see um, if that is the case. If, if we want to isolate, I want to isolate the problem. So what we're going to do to try and isolate the problem is we have this ohm meter that makes a noise when the circuit is closed. So we have the two wires coming from the electronic points. We're gonna try and see if the circuit is opening and closing. And if it is, then, you know, we know that the module isn't, it's not receiving a signal, it's not sending out a signal, it's messing up in some way. Okay, so it's closed. So right now it's closed. Still. Okay, it's staying on. So I'll be 100% honest. Only knowing from what I know about points, that's why we hooked up the ohm meter to those electronic points to see if the circuit opened and closed when we bumped it over because that's what points do. I don't know if it's supposed to be always closed like that or open like that. Coil is getting 12 volts and this ignition box over here, I just tested it. Getting 12 volts coming to this ignition box, well, ignition module from the truck. So having that being said, since we already have the module box, we'll go ahead and replace that, plug everything back in, and maybe we'll get spark. I heard it. Yeah, I heard it. Take this fuel hose off. It's on there, rock hard. I got a knife for it. Yeah, we'll just slice it. Yeah, look at that. 
Oh yeah. Hear that? Yeah, she's brittle. There ain't nothing left of that. Is that long enough? Just a tad more. Perfect. I'm gonna hook up the mahawk. Okay. I can hear that bowl filling up. Yep. Good sign. Oh, oh. It's full. Well, that ain't good. Yeah. Yep. That float stuck or something stuck in there, pumping gas right out of the top. See if it goes. There we go. We need at least a little bit of choke. Try again? Yeah. It's trying. Hold on. Okay. Give it a try. try and take this nut and screw off the back and maybe unstick that float without taking this carburetor apart. She pretty dirty. Uh-uh. Oh. I think I felt it here. You want me to spray this real quick? Yeah, I can feel it moving in there. Took that valve back out, or that needle, or seat, or whatever this is on a holly, and we're gonna try and put a new O-ring on it, because whatever that was, it was an O-ring. It's not anymore. So we'll see which one of these fits. Yeah, that thing wasn't doing anything. No. A little loose. A little loose? Kind of looks like that one. Give her a whirl. Doesn't mean it's right, but it'll at least get it to run for now. Uh oh, might work. Yeah, for now. Give it a shot, right? There we go. Let's see if that stopped it. Oops. Yeah. It's better though. It's still just coming out of that thing. Still. It's just coming right out. Yeah. There we go. 
It went. Oh yeah. There we go. Man, alive. Okay, we're out. Good lord. Go ahead and try it again. Almost. Yeah. Boy, it's low. Coming up on it, maybe. You see it in the tank? Yeah, it's starting to fill up the neck. A lot of, a lot of bubbles. Huh. Okay, now it's filling up. Shut it off. Put that on for now, I guess. Well, we'll probably find that leak. Yeah. We have another one we're going to swap out with it just so we can get it running today. And uh, we're going to rebuild that one. Did you say you got that brand new or you rebuilt it? Um, I don't recall. I think I rebuilt this one. <laughs> it's been a while. It's Perfect. been on the shelf. All right. It's right on. You want to try it? Yes, sir. Oh, wait, I got the uh, coil unplugged. Try it. Okay. You have to pump it. What the heck? Okay, go ahead. Carburetor was definitely our problem. All right, we finally got it to idle. Had to mess with the idle mixture screws and everything, but the carburetor seems to be doing all right. It's dripping a little bit uh, out of that flow bowl, I think. Yeah. But it's running. I don't see it leaking any water out either, which is pretty sweet, actually. Idling just a little rough. Uh, it's not super. It's not 100% smooth. It's a little, little rough. But I'd like to see this thing move under its own power today. I don't know if those brakes are leaking because semi truck brakes. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but they're always on. So if those things are leaking air real bad, they might not pump up to where we can move it. Running. 
freaking singed my dang hair off. <laughs> All right, you go ahead and try it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they're working. Okay. So we can go ahead and uh, put this gas tank in the seat and run it and see if it'll move under its own power. All right, let's see. Some of our gauges seem to be working. I don't know if our alternator started charging, but it's showing amps. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Our temperature gauge seems to be working. Oil pressure, our RPM gauge is working. Wow, this thing is sweet. Sorry, the sun's going down, guys. I'm trying to uh, film this before the sun goes down. Glare is really bad. Air pressure, we got air pressure. one's first. Oh. That one. <laughs> All right, so we're moving. Sure the brake work. Ooh. Brakes work. All right, we're going. that way and then like come that way gotcha. try that okay. do you feel it walking yeah i feel it walking walking the tires off mm -hmm. the ramp tires coming off the bead. A little bit of backfiring. But look at that, even some of the lights work. A homemade gas tank for today. Roped up. Check this out, even the uh, even the dash lights work. See that? I just turned off all the lights real quick so I can show you guys. Even the dash lights work. That is so cool. This thing is in such good shape for sitting outside for 20 years. So I'm not completely sure what Jake wants to do with this one yet. He suggested he might want to sell it. He might work on it a little more. There might be another update video on this. Jake already bought the brake chambers for the back. I think we're going to rebuild the carburetor that was on it. We just put another one on it just for now to get it running. Definitely a lot of odds and ends to work out on this truck. Air lines, air leaks, I can hear one right now. I don't know if the mic can pick it up, but oh, the lights work, the motor runs, the tranny shifts, the brakes work, the air pumps working. I mean, this thing is just burly. I love this thing. It's so freaking huge. Jake ended up actually figuring out this is a 466, so uh, it's not the 404. It's the biggest engine they offered. And some of these were offered in 4x4s, which I was reading, but this one is a 4x2. It's two-wheel drive. So drop it down in the comments if you want to see an update video on this International. There's definitely more work to be done. I would love to come back to Jake's and work on this with him some more. So let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you guys for watching. I think this is the last video I'm going to be putting out before Christmas. So if you guys don't see me before then, Merry Christmas to all of you guys and God bless. We'll see you in the next video.
What's up guys, I just wanted to throw this in at the end of the video, just kind of as like a, not an ad, but you know, I want to throw it out there. If you have a pre-1980 vehicle, you're either wanting to get running or possibly sell. I'm in Arizona, so hopefully you're in Arizona, I'm in Tucson, within 500 miles of there, preferably, that you're looking to get rid of, sell, get running again, please email me. My email is right here, I'll put it in the description and in a pinned comment. I'm open to either helping you get your pre-1980 vehicle running or buy it uh, if it has a title possibly. I'm looking for abandoned stuff pre-1980 that hasn't ran in at least 20 years. Um, I'm open to cars, trucks. I've always wanted to work on like an old, old piece of construction equipment like a dozer, a blade, or something cool like that. Kind of like what Diesel Creek works on. I think that stuff's cool. I've always wanted to get my hands on like an old Mack truck, an old Kenworth, an old Peterbilt. Either work on one or buy one or something of that sort. So shoot me an email, whatever you got, within 500 miles of Tucson preferably. Either get it running or buy it from you. Let me know.